he doesn't sleep. So we often should always be aware of our impending circumstances. Amen? Amen. Always being diligent to make sure that we're in right standing. Okay? Because the devil thrown, uh, uh, goes about like a lion. Amen? Amen? And he's looking to see if anyone does not have their armor on. And if he can find you, he'll take you out. Amen? Amen. Well, I had, a, I had a, a word for you guys this morning, and as I sat down, the Lord gave me a different one. That's right. So, get out your Bibles and turn to Luke, chapter 12. This goes right along with the message that we talked about last week. Jesus is always in the gospel. He is always preparing his, his disciples. Okay? He's got a three-year mission. Amen? Jesus knows this, too. He knows how long he has. You guys agree with that? Yeah. So he makes every opportunity that he can to make sure that he is teaching what he needs to teach, right? And within this three-year period, he is making sure that these guys get everything they need. Amen? Because when he leaves, it's all on them. Amen? And the Holy Ghost. Praise God. It's not just on, on us alone. We're, we're not left orphans, are we? No. But we do have some armor that we can put on. And it's not just for defensive measures. It's for the offensive uh, structure also. Amen? Amen? So let's pray real quick and let's get into the Word. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to get into your Word this morning. Father, you have given me this word, so I'm asking that you perform it. Uh, it. Let it not be me, God. Let it be you. Let this work come from you. Let us partake of the bread of life. Let us partake of the bread that sustains us, God, and, and keeps us going from day to day, week to week, year to year, that we may be found faithful and reliable and trustworthy, God. And, and, and on fire for you, God, and being made as a witness and as a testimony of your grace. We thank you, God, that all these things have been given to us so that we can have a life of success. Uh, you've given us all things that we may be found successful in doing the will of God. So help us, O oh God. Teach us your ways. Give us everything that we need this morning. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 12. And we'll start in verse number 35. If you guys are there, say, Amen. Amen. Okay. It says, Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning bright. You guys see that? And it's like, wow. Here we are, starting off from where we left off, okay? And, and this is Jesus talking now, right? This is not Paul. This is Jesus. And he says, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning bright. Now, remember what the word girded means? You guys remember what that word means? Protected? Always ready. Okay? You're, you're clothed and you're ready. Amen? That's what girded means. You're clothed and you're ready. Amen? Amen. So Jesus is saying, be clothed and make sure that you're ready. Okay? With your lamp burning bright. Amen? And this is neat, guys, because we don't have a lamp up here, do we? We're just the lamp up here. Where does the lamp fit in? Amen? Where does the lamp fit in? Well, let's, if you guys remember back in uh, Matthew chapter 6, you guys don't have to go there, but in Matthew chapter 6, 
We talked about how uh, the lamp is likened unto the eye. Amen? And Jesus was saying that if the light, if, if the lamp was good, if the eye was good, the, the, the eye would have plenty of light. Amen? So, in essence, we're looking at the light as being within us. Amen? Because the lamp is shining its light and the light is found in the eyes. Amen? The light is found in the eyes. And so we often see a, a person with a lamp and, and we understand that the lamp is lit so that we can see. Amen? When it's dark outside and we don't have a light, it's hard to see, isn't it? It's hard to be found direction. It's hard to find your pathway. But even in Psalms 119, it says in Psalms 119, it says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen? So there's a light and a lamp. And God wants us to make sure that we have this on. He wants to make sure that we're ready and, and dressed. Amen? He says, Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning bright. And you yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he, uh, when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, that they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. Now, let me ask you guys a question. What time is the second watch? Daytime. The second watch. Daytime. Let me ask you this. When does second shift start? About 2 o'clock, right? Okay, what about the third watch? Or third shift? It's the night shift, isn't it? You guys understand, it, the way that we do things in our uh, businesses are often uh, uh, done the same way even in Bible times, okay? The second watch is, is midday. The third watch would be at night, okay? And, and God is saying, listen, He wants us to be ready, not just during the day, but even at midday and even at night. He wants us ready. He wants us watching, amen? And the reason is, is, is this is because we don't know when He comes. We're not going to know when He comes. Are you guys ready? Are you guys girded? Girded with what? Truth. truth. Amen? Girded with truth. Amen? And you're watchful. Now, I, I'm not sure if you guys have ever been this way before, but in, in, in time, when time and seasons go by, Okay, when times and seasons go by, I, I want you guys to understand that sometimes when times and seasons go by, we often get kind of lax and daisy. Okay, we often start, uh, you know, being complacent. That's a good word, and, and we're not as diligent as we should be. Okay, and as weeks and times and years go by we start becoming a little less than what we should be. Amen? So how can we continue to stay strong? How can we continue from season to season to be on our best? Okay? I, I, I really want us to be the same way, if not better, next season than we are this season. Amen? I, I, seriously, I want us to always be looking within us and making sure that we're moving ahead and not lagging behind. Because you understand, we can't just stand. 
Okay, if we stand still and do nothing, we're actually going backwards. You guys know that. Now, in reference to this, in Ephesians chapter 6, when, when Paul was saying that you should have all your armor on when the attack comes, that you should stand and often have to stand, even by yourself, amen? But when the attack is over, or do we run backwards or do we run ahead? We run ahead. And actually, even when we're attacked, we should always be striving to go forward, amen? Because I'm telling you the truth, if we stand still and not do anything but hold up our shields, it's not going to be as effective as taking our shields and then plowing in and taking over, amen? Because eventually the devil's going to lose, amen? Eventually we're going to take over the land and take over the things that he's taken from us, amen? But we're going to have to be diligent. And we're going to have to have this mindset of being diligent week after week after week. That's right. I'm serious. Year after year, month after month, we're going to have to be diligent. Amen? To make sure that we're always ready because we're not necessarily knowing when Christ comes. That's right. Amen? We just don't know. But it's kind of neat, though. He says that if he finds us ready, if he finds us watching, that we're going to be a part with him. Amen? Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing something special together. And he's even going to serve us. Which, is like, wow. You know? I'm not necessarily looking for that time in a sense, but... As you guys understand, when it comes down to even Thanksgiving, amen? You guys understand that Thanksgiving is coming up, and, and I, I'm sure you guys, I hope you guys are going to get with family and friends this year, amen? But, but who's the servers? The ones that usually host the event, right? Are they not the ones that serve? I'm just looking at Jesus. He's going to host the event, right? And he also becomes the servant of all. Okay? He said those who are the top leaders have, have to be the, the servant. That's right. Look at verse number 42. And Jesus, and the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler of his household to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find doing when he comes. For truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. You guys see that? So there is a reward. There is something to look forward to. There is something that we're going to be gathering or something that we're going to possess when we get there. Amen? Amen. And I'm telling you, I want to be somebody great. Whether I get that here on earth or not, who knows? But, you know, if I'm faithful in doing what I need to do here, the Lord says there's something better on the other side. Amen? We're not just going to be wielding hearts and, you know, playing on the clouds. Listen, there's going to be opportunity. Okay, there is. I'm not necessarily sure what's the, what heaven's all about, but Jesus said that we're going to have rulers yeah. and, and people who rule over many things, amen? And so if there's rulership, there also has to be jobs and resources, right? There has to be something to rule over. You guys understand? So let's just look at it. And understand that if we are diligent in doing these things, God wants to reward us. Now, I'm looking back and, I, and I'm asking myself, and it's like, well, Lord, how do we keep ourselves? I mean, it, it's getting cold. Our season is changing. 
you know, some of us uh, might consider, you know, being less diligent, you know, in coming to church and less diligent in reading the Bible. Listen, I'm trying to stir you guys up this morning because I really want you guys to transfer through this season, amen, and, and be stronger than what you are today, amen. I really do. I want you guys to be transferring through. I mean, this is a tough season. To be, uh, uh, to be, uh, why does transfer keep on going through my head? To, uh, to go from this place here to the next place down the street, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. More than what we are used to do. Amen? But if you guys are willing, amen? If you guys are willing, there's a part to play in. And if you guys are willing, there's a reward for doing things good. And there's a reward for working extra hard, isn't it? Amen? There's an effort, there, and there's a reward for the effort. Amen? Just know that uh, God has got something in store for us, and it's not just for us to have another building. It's not just for, so that we can, you know, have a, a nice place. It's really to to uh, to give us a reward. Okay, because uh, for the last five years we've been here. Have we not been faithful? Mm -hmm. Have we not been diligent? Mm -hmm. Have we not been? You know, taking care of things and doing things the right way. Amen. I'm, I'm just saying. So I'm looking at, at this next place as a reward. I really am. For a job that's being done well. Amen. It, look at the bus. Is that not a reward? It is. But it also means that we have to maintain a whole lot more and, you know, take care of it, right? But listen, if we didn't do what we had to do with our van over the last five, six years that we had it, and, and you know, I don't think we would see a bus. Amen? That's right. But being that we did well, being that we did what God wanted us to do, He gave us a bus. We didn't have to buy it. Amen? It's the same thing with this place out here. I really believe it with all my heart that if we continue being diligent, if we continue keeping our lamps on, amen, if we continue, God's going to reward us with something good, amen, and there's a, there's a part to play for everyone here, amen, there's, it's not just about me, it's not just about my wife, it's not just about you or any, listen, it's for all of us, and, and more, amen, just think about what God is going to do in this next season. Just think about it. Why are we moving? Is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? What does God say? All things are Our things are, are good to God, right? Everything that God does is good. So it's not bad. I, I praise God that we're finally moving on. Amen? We've been here long enough. I just really feel that. It's not that I don't like the place, because I do. But there's been hardships. There's been difficulties. There's been uh, things that we've had to deal with. Amen? And, and things that we've had to overcome. But I'm looking at this now as an opportunity to move up. Amen? And in moving up, there's more responsibility. Amen? That's right. There's more responsibility. Which means now that I've got to make this person do more than what I've been doing. Amen? I've got to gird myself up more. Amen? I've got to be more than where, I, than where I'm at today. Amen? You guys see that? Okay? Now, turn to Psalms. I wanted to find that scripture in Psalms 119. And you know what? I come to find out so many of the things in Psalm 119. It's really interesting. He says, gird yourself with truth. Amen? What is the truth? 
The Word of God. Amen? So we need to be in the Word of God. Amen? How many of us will dedicate ourselves a little bit more this season to be in the Word? All of us. I mean, seriously. We need to gird ourselves. Even Paul says, you know, study to show yourself approved. Amen? Study. Study, 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 study. How do you learn to how, how are you going to know if it's true or not unless you study? And you gird yourself. You prepare yourself with the word. Amen? You prepare yourself with truth. Well, the Psalms, especially Psalms 119, Psalms 119 is the longest book or the longest chapter in the in the Bible. You guys know that? Psalms 119 is the longest one, chapter in the Bible. That one song? One song? It's uh, actually many songs. And it's got the complete alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet. Okay? If you guys want to know the Hebrew alphabet, it starts in Psalms 119. Okay? Uh, but, but check this out, right? I'm looking at this, and the Lord says, Gird myself, right? And, and make sure that my lamp is lit. Amen? What, what does the lamp consist of? Hmm? Oil. You have to have a reservoir, right? So you have a reservoir. Inside the reservoir is some oil. And then you have to have what? A wick. And then you have to have what? Fire. And then you have to have fire. Right? It's just kind of interesting how everything that we're seeing here in Psalm 119 is, is kind of referenced to all this. Check this out. Look at verse number one. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, as, they, as also do they also do no iniquity. They walk in his way. You, as you have commanded us, you keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed. When I look into your commandments, I will praise you with my uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. You guys see that? Isn't that awesome? This is a man who is really wanting to walk with God. This is a man who wants to continue to be diligent. Okay? This should you be your heart cry. This really should be your heart cry. Today, tomorrow, next week, next year. Lord, help me. You know, let me be this kind of man. Amen? Let me be this kind of woman. What if you guys were this way every day? Wouldn't that be awesome? You know, wouldn't you be a lamp? Wouldn't you be a light? Even Jesus says back in Matthew again, he, he talks about the lamp being set uh, on a lampstand, right? He says, let your light shine. Right? Let your light shine. We're here. This man is, is really going after God in this in this passage, and he says, God, I'm, I'm wanting to seek your seek your ways with my whole heart, right? That's right? He wants to be diligent in everything that he does. Look at verse number 9. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. For your word I have hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. You guys see that? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Look, 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 look. Jesus says, gird yourself with truth. Gird yourself and be ready. This man is getting ready, amen? This guy is even hiding the word. Where? In his heart. You know where the light's going to be? In your heart, Right? Whatever you guys see is in your is coming from your heart, right? So hide the word in your heart. You guys need to study. Study, study. This is a good time 
to get into the Word. Amen? This is a great time to get down deep. You know, the, the leaves on the trees often fall off during this time of year, right? But you know what happens during this time of year to the trees? You guys know what happens to the trees? The leaves fall off and it looks dead. But you guys know what happens to the trees during this time of year? It starts growing roots. Okay? It start, the root system starts getting deeper and deeper. Okay? During this season. I'm serious. It, it keeps on growing, but it, it grows down. Okay? And, and that's what we should be uh, focused on this, this season is making sure that we have a good root system. Amen? Because when, when we have our armor on, we're, we're told to stand. Amen? Against every wile of the devil. Amen? And even in Matthew, when that, when that uh, house is built upon the rock, amen, the winds and the waves come and beat vehemently against the house. Amen? And the house stands. Yep. Amen? It continues to stand. Yep. How? Why? Because it's rooted. Yeah, that's right. It's built upon the rock. It's rooted. It ain't going to go anywhere. Okay? <laughs> Amen. But, but how are you guys going to stand? How are you guys going to get through this, this hard time? Okay? It, it, it's going to be hard. I'm telling you, for some of us, it, it can be harder than others. But I, I'm telling you, the reason why we go through hard times is so that we can find our roots. Yes. Amen. We need to find our root system. Right. And, and look, going back to Matthew again. Jesus talks about the, the, the parable, right? Of the sow of the seed. Some seed falls by the wayside, right? If you guys understand, the wayside is a hard place. It, it's where it's often traveled, amen? And, and it's hard to find seed growing roots along the wayside, isn't it not? Because it's often hard. And then you have seed being planted in, in soil that's all rocky. Right? And has all kinds of rocks and boulders in there. And, and, and again, because of the, the soil, it's hard for a seed to take root. Amen? It, it says it sprouts up really quick. But because of the lack of the root system, it often dies real quick. Okay? It grows up real quick, and then it blows away real quick, too. Okay? We need to understand, Jesus really is concerned about our root system. Amen? He wants us to be rooted and grounded and girded with truth. Amen? Because if we find ourselves standing in truth, we will yes. not fail. We will not That's be ashamed. Right. Amen? Right. I'm telling you, we will not be ashamed. Yeah, no. Amen? That's right. So Psalm 119 is full of all this stuff. Look at verse number 15. I will what? I will meditate on what? Your precepts. And contemplate your ways. You guys see that? You guys see that? Is this done every day? Yes. You sh yes. It sure does. Yes. Amen. It should be contemplated. Oh, at least Amen. To get there. Amen. <laughs> Look at verse number 16. I will what? Delight. Delight. Now, I'm going to use a, a word play on this. I will delight in your ways, right? I will delight in your statutes. Listen, delight. Isn't he talking about the light here? Keeping our lamps <laughs> on. <laughs> He's talking about our lamps, right? Keeping the light. He's talking about keeping the light on. You guys see that? <laughs> that is so funny. But it's serious. If you delight in him, will he will the light not be on? That's right. Yes. That's one way. You guys need to be delighting. Isn't that neat? I've seen that. Like, I like that. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget. You guys see that? How many of us forget his word? You see, when we forget, are we not loosening 
that belt that we should have girded about us. You guys see that? Many times because of seasonal things. Listen, we might have been diligent through the summer, right? We might be on fire in the summer, but come the winter time, come the fall time, it's like your TV shows come us to get distracted. Oh yeah. Some All the TV time. shows, man, they they man, I I like them, but I don't. Throw away your TV. You know why? Because Wednesday night, man, they have my shows on, man. And it often comes on days where I am in church. You guys often, is that something from the devil? Got me a reason for that. No you more. think the devil tries to I think God's trying to keep us. What, what about Sunday? Distracting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Sunday? Well, what's the big thing going on on Sunday? Football. Yeah. I wonder why people ain't here this morning. Maybe it's because they're of their football team. I mean, I'm just saying. Four years ago, there there was a there, there was a uh, uh, a, uh, a resistance on football being put on on Sunday. There was a resistance, but there was a lot of people going to church too. And the Amen. Pressure to get done by certain time. <laughs> and I'm just saying, guys, that there there's a, there's a lot less of a resistance now. I'm just saying. And then there's a lack of respect going on too. Amen. Come on now. We're not respecting God. So why would we respect each other? Yeah. What? Uh oh. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Verse number 17. Check this out. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. You guys see that? Verse number 22. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Verse 24. Your testimonies are also my delight and my counselor. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Verse 25. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. For I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying. And grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. You guys see that? This whole thing is made up of, of a man desperately wanting to see God, uh, God's life in him. Amen? I, I see a man that wants to be pleasing to God. I see a man that's wanting to, to, to do things. Amen? And, and, and do things right. Be raised. Amen? And, and be raised up. In, in truth. Woo! In, in, yes. Amen. You guys see that now? That should be crazy. That's like a prayer. That it, there's a like step that we need God to help us to be better. You're right. I wonder if we took this time and, and did what WT was saying. I wonder if we would take this time and pray this chapter. I find myself praying these similar things, but not even knowing how to say it like that. But wow. At least this gets clear, though. Yeah. Clear things that he wants us to ask him for so that we can be aware of his changing in us in the way, the way he can fix these things and make us aware. This is awesome, man. You guys see that? Love it. So, what can we do this this season, guys? Can we gird ourselves? I mean, seriously, we're going to have to put on our clothing, amen. Even more so now, we might make sure that we ha have our not just one coat on, but make sure that we have both coats on, amen. Because it's getting cold, you know. My brother was. 
Bless his heart. He's, he's riding his scooter to church this morning. And I'm wondering, why is he doing that? You know? He has his reasons, obviously, but I would I would hope that he would have enough clothing on to be able to withstand that kind of a torture. You know? But he can say, man, I'm not frozen to death. You know? Praise God. He's here though this morning, amen. With fingers. With fingers and toes. <laughs> but I'm telling you guys, we need to be ready, man. We need to kind of contemplate and look at things, you know. Even the Bible says in Proverbs to ponder the path of your feet that you may not stumble. Okay? You know what ponder means? To carefully think these things over. Okay? Before you move forward, you need to think about where you're going, right? You need to think what you need to do. Before you go back, right, you need to think about things. Before you move from left to right, you need to think about things, amen? You need to look at things and kind of plan ahead. Even the Bible says it again in Proverbs. It says that a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. You guys see that? A man just planned his way. And I'm hoping that you guys do some planning. Amen? Don't just be haphazard. I, I, I know, listen, sometimes God even has me do things on, on the spur of the moment. Okay? But more times than not, more times than not, he's, he's having me think out things long before we even get there. Okay? It's just like, just like us moving. Amen? I've had this thing planned out now for about two or three months. Really, I have. And I'm, every day I'm thinking about things. Okay, God, what do I need to do next? There it is. And, and I'm, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, what do I need to do next? Because there's so much to do. Amen? There's so much to do. And all of this has got to be over there in the next 30 days. Or less. Or less. Or less. That's the one thing we do before everything. Ask God, what do we do next? Yeah. I think that, that would be that we would truly be able to go on with life. You're right. We're going to get it. You're right. Get it. You know what happened yesterday? Yesterday, we, you know, I had a plan that I was going to do this and this and this, and, and I was going to do this. I, I didn't. I got there on time, but some of the people didn't get there until a little bit later on. Some people didn't get there at all. But. <laughs> Bless his heart. But, but listen, just because I plan something doesn't necessarily mean that it goes the way that I want it to go. Right? But you guys still came, praise God. And, and the things that happened were done a whole lot more effectively, and we got more done yesterday. Amen? We really did. In spite of what happened or didn't happen. Okay? I didn't get to go to a funeral yesterday, but, you know, I, I felt within my heart that I had to stay where I was at because we were in the middle of something, and I don't like to just stop in the middle of something. I want to make sure that at least that what I'm doing gets complete, amen, to a certain degree. I can't do everything, but what I need to do is I need to start and finish. I need to start and finish, and then it's I'm, I'm telling myself all the time, I'm asking myself, if I start this, can I finish it? If I start this, can I finish it? You know, whether it's today, next week, next month, can I finish it? You see, a lot of times I start things and I can't finish it. You see, I'm not looking ahead. And I'm not planning far enough along the way. Because I can't get distracted if I'm not careful. And even Jesus said, and again, it was last week or the week before, his disciples came, or a, a person who wanted to be a disciple came up and said, hey, I want to go with you, Jesus, but let me bear my father first. Right? What did Jesus say? Let the dead bury the dead. See? Now that was a harsh statement. But listen, sometimes, not every time, 
sometimes God's work comes before everything else. Amen? And that's the way I felt yesterday. I felt like everything was going to be taken care of over here, but I still had to deal and take care of this. And, and when we got done, man, I'm telling you, it was awesome. And I uh, commend you guys for working hard and being a part of the process. Amen? Now, there's a lot of work to do. And I'm putting up the offer today, okay? If you guys can come and help us out uh, over the next two or three weeks, please, okay? Let's coordinate some things and see if we can get together and, and get some stuff done. Amen? Amen? But this is the time where we are girding ourselves. Amen? And staying focused, staying in the Word. Amen? So that we can get our roots grounded down into the ground to where we don't have to worry about the this, this season coming up. Amen?